it never fails. Hitty and ginger ale. Hey, JD Alias, what's going on, man? So you've been checking out this Galaxy Watch 3, and you wonder if you should get it or not. And you just want a nice little review to let you know all the sweet details and ins and outs and stuff like that. Well, let me try to walk you through a day or so of uh, what this thing is like to have. And hopefully that'll help you make your decision. So let me pull over. We'll talk about it a little bit. Let's do it. Golly, it is hot out here this morning, man. It's this early in the morning and the sun is already establishing its dominance over me. Let me, hold on, let me disrobe and get me some water. Speaking of water, uh, yeah, you can track your water on this thing. So let me go ahead and do that before I forget. So I've had two and this will be my third and fourth because this is like, I don't know, this is probably 20 ounces. Either way, you can track your water on this thing. So, so that's a huge plus. It also lets you track your calorie, or not your calories, but your caffeine. I'm not a huge caffeine drinker. I'm usually drinking like one to two uh, cups of coffee or something like that per day. So it's not too much for me to track. So yeah, all that normal stuff is there. And look here, I'm not gonna go down all the specs and stuff of this watch. There are a plethora of videos out there kind of going into detail. I'm here to give you a real day in the life experience. So yeah, I just took a, a quick bike ride, just like one or two miles out there, just kind of warm myself up because I do want to do a workout later. And that's what I'm gonna tell you about right now in this particular segment, as far as fitness and sleep tracking. Since I brought up sleep, let me go ahead and tackle that because I probably forget because I got a real forgetful mind. <laughs> I did bring up a security issue yesterday regarding sleep. So as you're sleeping, this thing does not lock itself. And the reason why I bring that up is because I, I still own a Galaxy Gear or a Gear S3 Classic and Frontier. And while you're sleeping or at a, like a really resting state, it checks your heart rate and it says, hey man, this dude is sleep. Let me lock up his watch just in case, you know, he's out in public on a subway and he kind of nodded off on a train or something like that. Nobody's messing with his stuff. So this watch does not do that. I've gone all into the settings and stuff and it just doesn't happen. So beware of that when it comes to security, if you're sleeping or resting or something like that, pay attention, you know, if you're in a public place or something like that. So that's sleeping and it does track sleep very well. And it's telling me that I am not sleeping well lately, probably because I've been stressed out about cranking these videos out. <laughs> I'm losing sleep over this stuff, man. But it does track sleep very well and correctly. As far as well-being, uh, this watch is, is, is real nice, man. It's got this, um, this well-being. It's almost like a coach almost. So you can actually uh, do your stress. And it takes, uh, it takes like, uh, like your heart rate and your blood oxygen levels and stuff like that. And it kind of mixes it up and it'll take your stress levels. And my stress levels are actually pretty low, actually, uh, compared to my wife's, that woman's, oof, she's got some serious stuff going on inside. I'm gonna have to give her a massage later or something. Either way, it does tackle your stress levels or at least helps you monitor them with well-being and stuff like that. So if you're really concerned about your well-being in that regard, yeah, man, you got blood oxygen levels, fitness stuff, the whole array of fitness stuff. We'll get into it. And you got your sleep and stuff like that. So it's good for doing stuff like that. It even has fall detection, which I could not get to work. Maybe you have to really fall, but I was like laying on the ground, like falling on the ground <laughs> and then laying there for like a minute to see if this thing uh, would do an SOS call, but it never did it. So maybe you actually have to fall and then your heart rate drops or escalates or something like that. Probably either dropping or escalating uh, with your heart rate, that would probably trigger the SOS. So I couldn't mimic that in real life because I was okay. But let's just hope that works just in case that was something you were looking at purchasing this watch for. But as far as fitness goes, let's get in here and throw around some weights. That way I can tell you about all the other fitness tracking stuff it does. So one of the best features about this watch is that it has eight gigs of memory. That means you can put music and photos. It actually asks you if you want to put music and photos on your watch. The music, I totally understand, but the photos, who puts photos on a smartwatch? Seriously, whatever. But because you can actually disconnect it from your phone and use it as a standalone fitness device, it makes sense to put music on it. So I got a few tracks on here. Right now, I've been jamming me some uh, Mayor Hawthorne and uh, Tuxedo. I cannot stop listening to their music. Actually, I'm kind of mad at myself. This is a side note. I'm mad at myself for just now finding out about these people after all this time. How long has this group been around making these jams and I'm just now experiencing it? But as you can see, 
I got the Galaxy Buds in my ear. These are the Galaxy Buds Live. And I was listening to them on my bike ride uh, connected to my watch because my phone is actually in the house charging up because I left it off the charger again and I didn't charge it overnight. So I got the buds connected to my watch and the music plays fine. When I was riding my bike, everything seemed to work out just fine. I didn't experience any cutouts or latency or like, you know, kind of like it'll slow down or get chopped up or whatever. I didn't experience any of that on my, uh, on my bike ride. I just, you know, I didn't do like a severe bike ride. I was just pedaling like normal and I didn't go through any trees or anything like that. I don't even know if that matters since the watch is right here and my, my earbuds are in my ear. So it's not that far of a connection. I did see a comment on my, re on my uh, Galaxy Buds Live video that these do not work well with the watch or they cut out a lot, but I didn't get that experience um, when I was out there riding just now. And as far as a workout, I've worked out with both already and everything seems to be just fine. It shouldn't have a problem with this type of connection being this close uh, between your ears and your wrist. I haven't had that problem at all. But I will tell you that this thing, as far as connectivity, my Galaxy Buds Live would still be connected to my phone, which is in my, um, in my bedroom. But uh, as far as this watch, this thing will connect throughout the house. I could leave my, my phone in my bedroom on the nightstand and then walk into the kitchen. And even before I get to the kitchen, I'm feeling it vibrate because it's telling me it's disconnected. So connectivity, uh, as far as distance, it's, it doesn't work out too well. That's why if you're at home, you're going to have to connect it to Wi-Fi. That way it'll still get all your notifications and stuff through Wi-Fi. Because connectivity, as far as distance, is just not a thing with this watch. But as a matter of fact, I don't think it, it is a real thing with uh, the Galaxy, uh, the previous Galaxy watches and also the Gear S3 or the S3. I always call it the Gear S3. It's the S3. But yeah, so uh, that's just not one of its strong suits. But everything else as far as like connection to your phone and stuff or connection to, uh, to your earbuds, it's going to work out just great. So as far as fitness goes, ugh, I say this watch is a champ. Oh man, I will tell you this, there is nothing more refreshing than running in the Texas heat. No, I'm just kidding, that was a joke. Don't try that because you might die. I'm on the verge of death right now. Either way, I had to try out the uh, connection between the watch and the Galaxy Buds Live uh, because there was that comment that said there was a you know bad connection between the two. I didn't have that problem. No glitches or nothing right, like that. Cause you know, you're jarring your hands back and forth. So the Bluetooth is having trouble keeping up, I guess, between your ears and the watch. I didn't have that problem no lags, no glitches or anything like that. But I also had to try out, you know, these are polarized glasses right here. So I had to try these out with my watch because a lot of times you can have some, you know, some issues when it comes to screens like L LCD screens and stuff like that. This is AMOLED, but you know, a lot of times you'll have trouble with uh, polarized glasses. So I can see clear, like everything is crystal clear when I'm looking at it with my glasses and I'm, you know, on my bike or if I'm running or something like that. So that's a huge issue because a lot of times when you're out doing sports and stuff like that, you want to put on some polarized glasses. That way it keeps the glare out of your face and stuff like that. But then when you look at your phone or a gauge or something like that, particularly your watch, you can't see jack, but this one works out just fine. So there you have it. All right, man, since I've been outside for so long, I gotta take a shower because I smell like a billy goat. But you gotta help me pick my outfit out before I get in there. So we're definitely doing this burgundy shirt right here. And I got two choices of shorts. Which one is it gonna be? Is it gonna be the gray or the dark tan or khaki or whatever? We get to pick because I gotta change bands too. And that's what I wanna talk about is the versatility of this watch. It's a 400 some dollar watch. If you get the LTE version, it gets a little more outrageous. I, well, I don't know, something like that. Like something like four something, okay, for the watch. But if I'm gonna pay that much for a watch, I'm not a watch collector, okay? So if I'm gonna pay that much for a watch, I wanna be sure I can wear it with a lot of different things. Now, changing faces is one thing, but it comes with this kind of cheapy uh, leather band. It's, it's real paper thin and I just don't like it. Besides, I already had a really nice black leather band with stitching on the side. Uh, matter of fact, I got like a, a bunch of bands, so I want to be versatile. Being that this watch is a two-tone color with this matte black and then you got the chrome casing, it can be used with a lot of different things. You can kind of use it for sport like I'm doing right now with this sport face and the, got the sporty band with the, you know, the perforations on the side, or you can kind of dress it up a little bit. I got a chrome band right here to pick from, and then I have this uh, kind of rustic brown leather band right here, which I'm going to go 
I'm going to try to figure out which, out which one to wear with this outfit. So we'll put those there. We'll choose on those later. But yeah, so if you're going to spend this much money on a watch, if you're a lot like me, you want to be able to wear this thing like all the time and you don't want your watch throwing off your outfit. So the fact that this thing is two-tone, it can be super versatile between sport and all different types of uh, bands, whether they're silicone or leather or even metal. And I do have a video out there it was, uh, showcasing 24 bands uh, that I've tried out with this particular watch. This is the... Um, the mystic silver the two-tone so yeah you're gonna love that video just go check that one out but um yeah so if you're worried about being able to wear it all the time yeah you can wear this with any outfit but that brings me to like what's it for like it's a smart watch so if it's a smart watch that means you are one of those people who gotta be connected to your phone all the time <laughs> so we live in a world today where we do need our notifications if you know, if you're one of those people who just can't put your phone down, this is a good watch for you because it's going to give you every notification notification that you would want. Sometimes it's too many. So you can go into the settings and toggle on and off different notifications that you want. And I think you can actually toggle how much detail you get in your notifications. But with that being said, as far as messages, uh, text messages, you can always respond to those. And it has a built in text messaging app. But for other messaging services like uh, the Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and, and, you know, like IG messages and stuff, some of those you can actually uh, answer to messages or DMs. You can answer them. However, you cannot open the app on the phone or on the watch because it doesn't have one. It's just Tizen, so it doesn't support a lot of those apps. Uh, it's not like Wear OS. Matter of fact, I've never even had a Wear OS, uh, like a Google based watch. But I have, oh, Google's listening to me. <laughs> cancel google's always listening i didn't even say okay anyways stop i'm trying to shoot a video man these things are nosy anyhow back to what i was telling you so it doesn't support a lot of those apps you can find some apps in the galaxy store that like you know are kind of workarounds for you know doing instagram and stuff like that but i don't really trust those kind of things but uh, you can answer some messages just depending on what the app is. Most of the time when you want to interact with an app, it's going to tell you to go to your phone. Like you'll open it up on here and it'll say open up your phone. And then it actually opens up your phone screen or it'll brighten up the screen so you know to open it up. And it will launch the app for you so you can finish interacting with it. But as far as notifications go, you're going to get every last one. You're going to be inundated with notifications. So don't worry if you're worried about missing something. It's not going to happen. You're going to be getting buzzed and zinged and dinged all over your wrist because this watch does not miss a single notification unless you toggle it off. Okay. So work, go work going okay? Okay. Well, can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Yes. <laughs> can you yes, hear me? Oh, yes, can... I can hear you. Okay. Well, does it sound like I'm on? Does it sound like I'm on speaker or anything? No, it sounds like you're on your phone. I just kind of went out just for a second there. Okay. All right. Well, bye. I love you. I love you. Bye. All right. Bye. Cool. So that was a phone call test right there. But that was inside of a quiet environment. Uh, I'm in my kitchen, nobody else is home. And so if you take a phone call in a loud environment on your watch, I'm assuming you're gonna have a rough time with that. But you did that to yourself because who takes a phone call on speakerphone in a public place? That is annoying, don't do that. So just to let you know, phone calls do work, just don't be that annoying guy. Side note, delivery dude just dropped by and left me my Sony 1000 or WH-1000XM4s and I am pumped. So look out for the uh, video I'm gonna do on that real soon. I'm really excited about these things. But let's get on to something else like Samsung Pay. I gotta go to the store, so let's just see how that works. Great news, so if Samsung Pay was one of your concerns, like if it worked or not, you are in luck. It works as advertised, but I do have an issue with it because they decided to go with regular old, um, uh, that old, old school stuff, NFC. They decided to take the MST out of the watch. I guess, I guess it's to save battery or something like that. So they took that out of there in order to save battery, but man, I really miss having that because Samsung Pay used to work literally everywhere on the Gear S3 watch because it had MST. Uh, thankfully, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra still has it, I think. I haven't tested it yet, I just got it today. So hopefully they still have it in there, but now this watch will not work 
everywhere by using the magnetic strip on the side like the Gear S3 would. It works off NFC. So if it says Android Pay or something like that, or if it says NFC payments, you're good to go. Otherwise, you're just gonna be like the rest of the Apple users who can't use your watch to make your payments and stuff. Other than that, man, it, it all works okay. I'm not gonna to complain too much until it doesn't work, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, it is a smart watch and it only has a few functions that it's supposed to do. It's supposed to keep you notified. You use it as a fitness tracker and some other things for your health and stuff like that. And it does work as advertised. Every once in a while, it gets a little glitchy and it'll kind of you know, like slow down or bog down or something like that. I think that's just because they use like, you know, some old rinky dick processor or something like that. I don't know what processor they use in here, but overall it's been a great experience and a great watch. Like I said, I love the versatility and everything else about it. I'm having a good time using it. And if it's something you're looking at buying for the first time, if it's like your first uh, smartwatch, I say go for it, go, go all out and just go for it. But if you have the Gear S3 Frontier or Classic or both, is it worth the upgrade? I'm gonna go ahead and say no because it's it's too close. I don't feel like I'm getting much more. Yes, you do get more fitness stuff in there and you get a couple of more uh, integrated apps, which is kind of crappy on Samsung's part because it's the same, it's, it's pretty much the same watch. They just added more stuff to it that they won't give the older watch. So that kind of upsets me. But it, I don't, I really don't feel like it's worth upgrading unless you need that fall detection and you need the uh, the blood oxygen level stuff. Even, you know, if you need that newer stuff, go ahead and upgrade. But otherwise, I don't think it's worth it. I have one because I'm a tech reviewer <laughs> and it's what I do, man. <laughs> Either way, I'm no expert in this kind of stuff. But what I do know is it's a pretty good watch. It's just not up, it's just not worth upgrading from the Gear S3 if you already got one. Hey, man, I got to get out of here. Well, I got to finish feeding these birds. They like to come here and eat my bread. Oh yeah, the squirrels, man. I got so many squirrels and like five species of geckos that live out here. So I always keep them fed because you know, they keep all the pests away. We really don't have bugs around here. So I'm gonna keep on feeding my bugs, but y'all got to get the heck up out of my yard, man. <laughs> y'all have overstayed your welcome and y'all keep being good to each other. And I'll see you when I see you. Oh, so you one of them cats that like to just run up in a place, take what you want, then leave, huh? Man, you better hit that subscribe and notification button. That way you know when I'm over here opening up new stuff. And while you're down there, you might want to consider tapping that uh, join button and becoming a member because membership has its perks. See, that wasn't so bad. All right, man, I appreciate you. And I'll see you at the next one. Is that why you are here?